Welcome to Las Vegas for the continuation of the PTT PLO series. This is the Event 3 final table, a $10,000 buy-in event. My name is Rem Parinkama. Donnie Peters alongside me. We are still coming at you from the PokerGo studio in Las Vegas. from the very special looking triangle room. And we have another stacked final table for you with lots of PLO talent. Please chime into the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know if you're having a wonderful Sunday. There's football on. Formula One was just on. There's so much sports happening, and we're glad to have you all with us to watch some four-card poker. Carl Mockery from the Czech Republic is our current chip leader. PLO wizard Dylan Wiseman, second in chips. Former main event finalist Cliff Josephy in third. And we'll get you caught up on all these players in just a few seconds. Tons of money on the line again today. 103 entries, 15 places paid. $231,000 a pop, our biggest payout of the series so far. $61,000 guaranteed for the, the remaining the six players. And as yeah, always, more money we dive straight the into the action. I think I beat him anyway, but Donnie, I was like, I just can't. Donnie, biggest payout of the series yeah. so oh, far. The, the series is yeah, heating up. Yeah. yeah, let's go. Yeah. I'm ready. I feel like I would. And he got a job because Pretty pumped. Oh, that's rad. Yeah. He got, oh, a, no, yeah, for he got a real job. For branding, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. But in what field did it actually carry weight? It was Bernard Lee. Oh, that's awesome. Interesting. Wow, what did we just miss, Donnie? No, I mean, it's Talk sharp from Bernard Lee. Like, Bernie he knows what Lee he needs for his branding. You get to make money. Yeah, I felt weird not taking the money. Yeah. I, I don't... Because I wasn't playing, like, I didn't care about it, but I, I still thought it was stupid <clears> not to. <throat> Starting out in the action right away, Dylan Wiseman with a nice 10, 9, 8, 7, of course, early position at this six-handed table. Not the most, not the greatest spot to find yourself in, but still. That type of hand in late position you might want to get involved with. Yeah, we saw Dylan Wiseman at huge. yesterday's yeah. final table. Uh, you seriously feel like yeah. you're so far away. Consecutive deep <laughs> runs for him. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm like, <laughs> earning some <laughs> nice points for that series leaderboard race. Lots of fans of Johnny Bax in the chat already. <laughs> yes, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Plenty of accolades on the felt as well as, of course, notoriety. So that was say, reported accurately. For yeah. One of the most successful. That. Yeah, no, that was, that was accurate. Most, one of the most successful backing Dirty stables lines. back in the day. Well. <laughs> That's fine, Corral Hall. He played the hand. He hit, he hit the straight and the flush on the turn. It was really well played. <laughs> Didn't miss. Donnie, have you ever asked Dylan Weissman whether there's a, a method to the madness in okay. regards to his Subtle glasses? I wish I saw who it was. No, so I, I think they just help block out some of the bright yeah, lights you get in these studio bubble. settings. Would be my guess, although I really have no idea. I mean, the bright orange would make me feel like I'm tripping out or something. <laughs> was he also stone bubble? Or no, was one off. Okay. He neg stoned. Oh, yeah. Met her off here with the bet. So. Looks like 200K, perhaps? Mockery came into the final table as the chip leader. He is from the Czech Republic. Professional poker player specializes in, you guessed it, high stakes PLO cash. <laughs> I just want to say, if someone plays high stakes PLO cash for a living, they are probably dead inside because that takes so much strength mentally to stomach the swings that you must be an extremely cool customer. Arrival on the river here, Mockery with the best of it. <laughs> Better off misses. Fazil Madaroff from Sofia, Bulgaria. On his bio sheet, he didn't say professional poker player, Donnie. He said professional gambler. I like it. Always down for gamblers in the studio. Especially in the four card game. Better off decides to check from the small blind. Pair of seven. <coughs> Happy to get the showdown. Pair of seven's not going to do it for Metaroff as Mockery shows Queen Jack for a pair of queens. It's not your average kilo <laughs> showdown there, Donnie. Nope, not too strong of hands for either player, but you know, start things off slow here at this final table. I'm sure we're going to build 60, up 60. to some big pots. 
You too fast for me in the chat, says Remco, my fellow Dutchman. Shout out, my man, Max Verstappen, with another win today. Seems like F1 is getting more boring by the week. The Vegas Grand Prix just coming up, ending hopefully months long of traffic jams here on the Las Vegas Strip. Well, maybe it could be worse for you, you know? Let's say four, queen, <laughs> nine, or whatever. Mockery's best finish at the World Series of Poker. A 39th place, or excuse me, a 6th place for 39K in the 2021 3K PLO. So, true specialist focusing on the four card game. Holds over to Richard Greco in the small blinds. Familiar face, Donnie, the PLO scene. Yeah, he's been around a bit. I mean, we don't get too many PLO series, you know, all year round, or PLO tournaments, I should say, all year round, but Richard Greco always going to be one to show up. Also a coach over at Runner Once. That is like a, a badge of honor showing off that you got what it takes, because if you pass that <laughs> Phil, if you pass the Phil Gelfond's job interview, then you must have some serious chops, as we see King King 4 roll off the deck. Greco, the uh, happy owner of the king and the four. And here's your favorite thing, Donnie. Those, uh, the, the percentages. <laughs> the, percentage. the decimals are back. <laughs> if you're joining us on YouTube, please don't forget to smash that like button. If you're on Twitch, give us a follow. If you're catching us anywhere else, hit us up on Twitter. Twitter.com slash PokerGo. Let us know how you feel about our new studio. We call this the Triangle Room. It, it's sort of a working title, Donnie. We're still workshopping it a little bit. Hopefully we get some good suggestions from some of you. Yeah, I mean, it's still very much open to that name. It's open to a sponsor as well, so. Uh, meanwhile, Greco bets 60K. Weissman decides to raise it up to 170K. And Greco makes the call. Donnie, Weissman raising here, uh, basically sort of thinking to himself, a king is the only card that my opponent can continue with. Of course, a pair of fours as well, but there's not a lot of cards in his range that he can continue with, so good spot for a bluff. Yeah, and I wonder if we're going to see Weissman follow through here or if he'll ultimately just shut it down. You know, took a shot on the flop and didn't work out. Fairly similar between these two. Weissman does check behind. River card is the jack of hearts. Straight now for Weissman. An unwanted straight because, of course, Greco has that full house. If you're Greco here, Donnie, are you assessing this as, oh, Weissman took a stab and is now giving up? Maybe I go for thin value here, throw out a small bet, or are we perhaps checking again? to extract some more bluffs. I think you just go for a bet. That's what he's going to do. Looks like a healthy one at that. 300K into a pot of 520. Now, of course, Weissman asking himself, what does Greco call my flop raise with, and how often is that going to be some king combo that'll then often make a full house, of course, straight not that strong in that situation. Very well done by Wiseman. Taking a stab and then letting go of the hand. Drops him down to about 2 million chips. We have a sort of a wide middle class here at the final table. Greco, Joseph, Wiseman, and Hubbard are within a few big blinds of each other. Medorov, our current short stack. Shout out to Christy in the chat asking how my race went. Well, did not get on the podium. Fourth place, but hey, can't, can't win them all. Beautiful, though out in St. George, Utah. We highly recommend everyone to go visit beautiful vistas out there in the desert. Did you know that St. George is one of the fastest growing cities in the U.S.? I, I think I heard that. Yeah, it's Recently, wild. just in passing or something. Uh, Vegas, by the way, also on that list. Henderson, to be more specific.
By the way, if you're if you're enjoying our coverage, please let us know which other games you like to watch. You know, of course, this is the launch of our new studio. We're always trying to and add more favorite. content. Oh, when Whether I just it's cash or yeah, yeah. I'm trying to build up new grace. formats. <laughs> or, <laughs> you saw the shit I had. <laughs> <laughs> that him? Yeah, yeah, like very bad. Even I said we just fall. <laughs> well. Mockery seems like he's having a good time. I love to see it. Seems the casual and laid back. Of course, this is a big final table with these guys are all very much used to these stakes. Donnie, give us some insight from the main room because oh. I've, I've, <laughs> I've heard a rumor that today might be the wildest day of the series. It might be the wildest day of the PGT this season. Wow. Maybe the PGT in history, and that is because we have the PGT's first ever PKO tournament, Progressive Knockout or Progressive Bounty. Of course, Pot Limit Omaha, because this is the PGT PLO series. It is a 15K buy in. $9,000 of that goes into the regular prize pool, then $6,000 is for the PKO. You guys watched the Bounty final table yesterday. That was with static bounties. Every time you knock someone out, you got a bounty. It was worth $2,500. With the PKO variant, every time you knock someone mm -hmm. out, whatever their bounty is, you get half as an immediate prize winning. The other half goes into your bounty What's stack. So let's say you bust someone, someone who has a $10,000 bounty. You get to pocket 5 k Five thousand dollars then goes into your bounty, and as slow down as you can guess, as the tournament goes on and on and on towards the final table, the bounties get larger and larger and larger because the bounties continue to build better on the table. So we're going to be streaming that final table tomorrow. I mean, we could see somebody that has a hundred k bounty on their head, which wow. is going to be nuts. I can't wait. The guys out there are there was about fifty players to start. It it always pays to get here early, not only on the PGT because of the rake reduction stuff, but also, in a bounty tournament, you want to be able to get there early, have full stacks and even stacks so you can bust some people. Um, unlimited reentry. So, I mean, I can only imagine some guys are going to be putting, you know, four or five bullets in that thing. I mean, it's going to be a ton of fun. Four or five is low, Donnie. As we see, Greico pick up king, king, queen, queen with the suit. Comes in for a race. Uh, Mr. Daniel Legrano in the room. And you do not have to be looking into the room. You can just be listening because he was going nuts about his misfortunes in this PLO progressive bounty event. I think he's in for a few bullets, and I don't think he's going to stop until we reach the end of registration, Donnie. I can't wait. Oh. Greco winning the minimum here with a premium hand. But yes, unlimited re-entries in that event. We're streaming it live tomorrow, and uh, I'm, I'm expecting there to be a 100k bounty on one of these players. Yeah, I mean, I think that's certainly in the cards. You know, kicking off with about 50 players, we usually see the fields double in size from where registration starts. Doing so the, uh, commentary you'll on think the table. 100 I think it's is just uh, Donny Peters and Remco. That's I think right. they do all of the <laughs> all the ones in, I believe in this room. They cool. do they do those. Cool. Do you think that's nice when you use the word just before their names? Excuse me, that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I said it, and I was like, I don't think that was right. It is rude. Thank you for calling it out. Sorry. Great guys. Johnny Peters. <laughs> Killing it. I think I said that because I don't think they're PLO players. Not that they're bad commentators. But I don't think they pull in, like, a <coughs> PLO specialist. Johnny, you're supposed to be a PLO specialist. Yeah, right. No, that, that one I don't feel bad about. That one I don't feel bad about saying. Phil Weissman on I mean, the money here. There's only one Nick Shulman, so... I mean, we'll be the first. Donnie, I mean, we're, we're not PLO specialists. I'm, I'm putting it on my LinkedIn. I'll, I'll say, I'll say, great guy, <laughs> mediocre PLO commentator, and there will not be a single line in that sentence. Uh, Wiseman here, making the call, King ten ten nine. Maybe we can get Dylan Wiseman as a guest commentator later in the series. His insights when it comes to Potlum in Omaha are unmatched. Yeah. Um, listen to him do some commentary. Uh, also, got to give a credit to Alex Livingston, who did an amazing job on the Super High Roller Bowl PLO final table with Mr. David Tuckman. But yeah, Donnie, we, we are who we are. We are here to entertain the crowd. We are not high-stakes PLO players by any means. Yeah, I mean, well, of course, it's 
it's hard to get the PLO experts in during a PLO series. Guess where they are? <laughs> Playing the PLO. <laughs> Uh, as soon as as soon as you see a player bust from this table, as we see Medarov make a sizable raise from the big blind here, 300k after Hubbard limped the button and Josephy called. Hubbard with 7665 double suited is going to come along. This is going to be some uh, shallow flop play, even if Josephy gets out of the way. Medarov only 480k behind. Very curious about what his fourth card will be, Donnie. A nine or an eight, uh, especially of uh, one of the suits that he already has, would be preferable. Josephy, also with a mystery card, King Jack Jack X. Yeah, it's probably not a super premium card for his Josephy's fourth card because he might have three better pre flop. I mean, now we have. Raised it pre flop. We got a million in the middle here. <laughs> this could be massive as King 4 3 with two spades rolls off the deck. Uh, gut shot straight flush right here for Hubbard. Josephy hits, at the, at the very least, a pair of kings. Better off. I hope for him that he has a spade underneath there. Fun hand here for Hubbard. Flush draw, straight draw. Also got backdoor clubs, you know, just in case. If that fourth card for Josephy is a spade, it's a good spade, you know, we could see some fireworks here. Of course, if it's a king as well. Well, I think I would have expected him to pot it pre-flop out of the small blind after a couple limps if he had king, king, jack, jack. So we'll see how it goes. <coughs> oh, wow. Quick oh. move here from Josephy reaching for those chips immediately after Hubbard bets 325. Menorov gets away with it after committing nearly half Damn of his it. chips. Just have a draw. Okay. Hubbard not extremely happy to get that, was, that was Josephy who said oh was it he said damn it which <laughs> doesn't seem like it's a good sign wow Josephy with the all-in shove I mean he's got to be he's at least ahead for now but he's got to fade a ton of outs does have the ace king jack jack with clubs so Hubbard's backdoor club draw now officially dead as we see Josephy's cards. You guys can see the percentages. As Remco mentioned, Josephy has the best of it now, but he's got a fatal world of hurt. He's a lot of good turn cards for me. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that clubs are dead definitely helping Josephy. Three on the turn board pair, always what you're looking for if you're holding the bigger pair. Josephy, a, a slight favorite here going to the river. Let's see if he can hold up. River card is the eight of spades, and that does give Hubbard a winning flush. Massive pot worth 3.6 million going towards Hubbard here in the one seed. Stefan Hubbard from Harriman, Utah. Joseph here going to be left with 360K, which is six big blinds. He will have some free hands to work with being on the button on the next hand, but. Again. Big pot there going to Hubbard. Up to second in chips now. Closing that gap with him and Mockery. Hubbard's best career no, that's yeah, that's result. Yeah, that's right. It's 1.305. Yeah, 1 in the 25 k PLO high roller at the World Series of Poker in 2022 for 80 k That's right. His second best score and his third best score also PLO tournament results. We are dealing with the cream of the crop when it comes to Pot Limit Omaha here at the Poker Go Studio. Please keep in mind, these events are open entry. We get the question a lot, how do I play in the studio? Am I allowed to come play? Well, you can play any of these events. All you gotta do is show up, put your money down. People in the chat saying, you gotta repot that free with the Ace King Jack Jack. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't, um, or just pot it in general because it was two limps in front of him. You know, I thought maybe that that fourth card is probably, you know, something dangling, like a seven or an eight, something like that. Um, but yeah, the ace king jack jack, I, I think I would have expected <coughs> Josephy to just pot that. Josephy down to just six big blinds. At least he is on the button. You know, a little mm -hmm. bit of a, <laughs> a little bit of an upside there. Gets to watch a few hands for free, hoping to find a spot to double up Medarov. Can't forget that he committed 300k 
to that pot himself as well. He now also below 10 big blinds. Mockery, a happy observer of all this action. Still our chip leader. If you're with us in the chat, please let us know where you're watching from. What are you What are you doing on this Sunday besides <laughs> having the live stream on? Because, of course, I know that you know, we are always, all, always multi-tabling, always multiple things of action going on. I wonder if you guys have any, have you any bets on the on the football games today? Any any survivor pools you're still alive in? <coughs> Mockery here gonna attack with the queen jack nine four. Metaroff finds two aces. He's also got two sixes, and he's double suited as well. Good spot here for him to get his money oh. in. There is the pot size re raise. That's going to put him. Well, just about all Sorry, in. All but all in. <laughs> <laughs> Four fifty, four fifty-five. No call. Just four twenty. <laughs> Look at this. What Better off. Four four twenty. Getting so called. Four twenty. There's there's some behind yeah. it. Just said call. Wiseman. Yeah, Mockery just said call. Better off. Got sixty k behind. Thirty five back. Looks as though the mm -hmm. count was a little off to start today's final table because he has only 35k left behind instead of 60k. Still doesn't really change the equation here as Medarov goes to the flop with nearly all his chips in the middle and there it is. Top set for Medarov. Those final 35,000 chips go into middle as into the middle as well and Mockery only 4% on the flop. Not yeah, a sight trade. you see often you. in Pot Limit Omaha. Oh, not that it would matter. Running cards necessary for mockery. That'd be second drill idea also. Just send better off to the rail. <clears throat> Best case scenario here for the Bulgarian. Clash of the Europeans at this table. See the turn card. Well, ten. Ten. There it is. No. Oh. Not so bad. Eight of diamonds <laughs> on the turn. <laughs> now, Mockery, four outs. Any ten will do on the river. Not so bad as an understanding. That's also very could be worse, right? River yeah. card. It is the three of spades. Medarov is going to find a full double up here. <laughs> Produces a little smirk. He's now up Double. to. Hmm? Yep, never mind. We'll tell you later. Uh, uh. Up to 1.1 million here. one of our moderators is splitting wood for kindling before this came on. You can really tell that she is from Michigan City, Indiana, where winter has, I guess, fully started. Here in Las Vegas, 90 degrees again today. Closing in on November and still blazing hot outside. Uh, Shitsa in the chat asking, Negrano not doing well in the PLO tourneys? He, luck has not been on his side, Donnie, especially in the showdowns. Yeah, I mean, he's just hasn't really been able to get anything going. He fired a bunch of bullets in the $7,500 bounty tournament. Didn't really get much going. I mean, earned some bounties along the way, but ultimately didn't run deep in that one. He's out there, though, trying again. He's back here bright and early for the 15K. 
progressive bounty tournament. So, you know, we're going to see Negranu continue to grind, grind, grind. I believe he is leading the entire PGT season in That's caches. Wow. He just really hasn't Five been minutes. able to turn That's any of those caches into truly deep runs. We have seen him on some final tables or anything. Um, like over the course of the, the season. But, yeah, Negranu has 22 caches on the season. No wins yet. He's 30th on the PGT leaderboard. Of course, it's important to be inside the top 40 because that'll qualify you for the PGT Championship Million Dollar so like Free Roll. But yeah, camera, I'm assuming. Negrani working with 22 caches right now leads the way for that statistic. But you know, we know with him, it's, it's obviously great to finish in the money. But he's play, he's playing to win whenever he's out there. Absolutely, uh, Mockery here up against Wiseman. Mockery raced under the gun to 120k. Wiseman called from the big blind. On this paired board, nobody with trips. Wiseman with a plethora of outs to make it straight, but oh, they keep them in. Mm -hmm. Those little pump fake. Yeah, I was going like to say. Grab the chip, yeah, then it flick it in. Was that, you know, a pump fake, pump fake? Yeah, we'll see Already anyway, right? yeah. 55 unique players <laughs> in the 15K progressive bounty, Donnie. That budget. really sets us up for thing. some Order. amazing Order. gambling. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Get the money in, boys yeah. and girls. Your boy's up on top. Yeah, PLO well, expert. Ronald Kaiser, current chip leader. Jesse Lonis, Elis Parsonen, Roger Teska. Elias won the $7,500 bounty yesterday. Was an absolute master class in how to abuse the table when you have a commanding chip lead. I mean, just every single hand Elias Parsonen was raising. He, he did lose the chip lead for a split second. I think it was just for one hand when he got to heads up play with Alan Lee. Alan Lee had him out chipped because um, Alan Lee took out the third place finisher um, by 25k. I was and, getting up and, and after that, it was just you know, it was back to being all. <laughs> so. And I mean, even if you said no, if I really had to, I'm just gonna do it, right? But I just was wondering if you were like, uh, if whoever you were talking about was like, eh, we'd prefer not to. I'd be like, all right, whatever, I'll just stay sitting. But with Josephy here, finding something to go well, all in with. I mean, raises pot. And this is better off nice waste no time. What was the decision between Comes such a over high the table? top for pot as well. I yeah, love how these guys are not wasting any time. Six. Oh, it's more. Oh, sorry, sorry, 720. 720. Yeah, it's 630 plus 90. No, it's 630 plus 90. The contrary, 720. Some of the best kilo players yeah, yeah. in the world. Yeah, right. Dylan yeah. Wiseman does right. know how Seven, to count 720. the pot. 720 is indeed the three bet for better off. As Joseph's term of life will be on the line here. I call. As expected, Josie mm. makes the call. Oh. At risk you know here. It's high only. <laughs> and it's no bounty. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, he can't take it back now, Cliff. I mean, the money's in. <laughs> Medorov did not come here to sit on his hands. Has already been involved in the majority of pots to start at this final table. Josie at risk here with Queen Jack Jack 8. This pair of jacks. Makes him the mathematical favorite right now, but of course has to fade a bunch here up against two suits. By the way, the suits evenly divided here. Don't see that all too often in a showdown like this. And Queen 9 8 rolls off the deck, gives Medorov a flush draw. Josephy improves to a queen, but it is not really about what Josephy has at this point. It is more about what Medorov doesn't. And at this point, that is a made hand. Medorov needs a diamond. King hits on the turn, and all of a sudden, better off here. More out. 20. 20. I mean, look at the top of the screen. <laughs> we got enough room. Queens and eights for Josephy. Puts him in the lead. 50-50 here. Half the deck for Medorov. River card is the Jack of Diamonds, and that gives There's the Bulgarian the nut flush. Likewise. Cliff Josephy eliminated from this event in sixth place. Legendary player, great to see him at the final table, but today it did not work out for him. As Medorov wins his third hand of this final table, chips up to 1.7 million, and all of a sudden we have an extremely even match on our hands. Weissman and Medorov now at the bottom of the counts. $61,800 is the payout for Cliff Josephy. Text update from Tim Duckworth, already 80 players 
in the or 80 entries, as I should say, in the progressive bounty at the first break. Yeah, as I mentioned, they kicked off that tournament with 49, seven tables of seven. So, sounds like the chips are going in. That's what we like to see. Which, of course, tomorrow that's going to make for quite a fun and dynamic final table. We'll be live streaming it right here on the Poker Go YouTube channel. Progressive bounties, also known as PKOs in the online world, are certainly a very, very popular tournament item in online poker. Haven't really like taken the live poker world by storm. That's more of like the mystery bounties have taken the live poker world by storm. Everyone's running mystery bounties these days, but more and more live venues are also trying to incorporate progressive bounty tournaments, and that's what we're doing here with that event number four, the 15K PLO, that will be live streamed tomorrow right here from this fabulous new studio. Weissman raising it up here, King Jack, Jack eight. Hubbard in the big blind. <coughs> Five handed play means that the remaining players are guaranteed $77,250. Closing in on that six figure mark. Shout out to Jason Zambricki gifting <coughs> a PokeGo YouTube membership. The, uh, on the receiving end, Photonic Optics, thank you so much. Appreciate all the love and support that we get here in the YouTube chat. Could be some fireworks here on this hand. Wiseman flops a set of jacks. Hubbard has an open-ended straight flush draw. That is love to see. We saw a straight flush yesterday, Remco, in like the first two or three hands. Alan Lee made a straight flush. He also made quad kings, flop quad kings later on. So. Let's see if we get back-to-back -back days with straight flushes here. Awesome. And no, before anyone asks, we do not set up the cart, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Middle set here for Wiseman. The fact that he is on a shorter stack. The shorter stack, wet texture here, you know, no reason for Wiseman to really slow play this one. Hubbard, of course, got his day started earlier, doubling up through Cliff Josephy. That's what left Cliff Josephy short, and then Josephy ended up busting in sixth place. Looks like this is going to be the conservative approach for Hubbard. Just makes the call. Turn card is the ace of spades. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a royal flush. Oh my god. Donnie, I have never had the pleasure to call a royal flush, but there it is. I mean, what a card. Whoa. For Hubbard. Weissman now, of course, in a world of hurt. Even if the board pairs, even if he finds the fourth jack, he cannot win this hand. This the absolute stone cold nuts, a royal flush for Hubbard. Thank you. Yesterday, I believe it was a king high straight flush that we had, so we're one upping it here with the royal. And it's spades. I mean, everyone loves, everyone loves the spades. The best suit in the deck. This is incredible. Hubbard here checked the action over to Wiseman. <laughs> the bet is 450. I'm, I'm laughing because Hubbard's going to try and contain himself here as he double checks his hands. Yes, sir, you do have the King Ten of Spades among your cards. I'm laughing because this is the, the slow play spot of all slow play spots. A royal flush for Stefan Hubbard. At the final table of the PGT PLO series, event number three, 10K buy in, $231,000 on the line. How does he extract the maximum here?
Hubbard indeed leaning towards a call here, so it seems. Burning some time extension chips. Donnie, is this making him look weaker or stronger in your opinion? I mean, I, I think he's doing a good job of, you know, making it seem like he just doesn't have the, the stone cold nuts. He could, he could have, you know, some lower flushes here, playing a little bit more conservatively. River card is the three of diamonds. Not the board pair Hubbard was hoping for. Of course, you know, full houses are just a few of the remaining hands you could get paid off by. But on a board like this, the best Hubbard can, a can wish for is that Weissman also has a flush. We know that's not the case. Weissman perhaps happy to take this to showdown with his set of jacks, maybe not wanting to risk his tournament life. Or perhaps does he see a way to value Oh, wow, Dylan Wiseman betting into the Royal Flush, leaving himself with very little chips behind. Yeah, Hubbard, Royal. check raises <laughs> all in. Wow. 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 I think, yeah, Wiseman snap folded there. Yeah, he said all in, I folded. Wiseman with the snap fold after his opponent moved all in. One, right? Yeah. Hubbard shows it. You have to show the Royal, of course. Of course. Of course. Weissman saving his yes. tournament life by a fingernail. Can I see the whole hand? Never mind. King 10 6. King 10 7. King 10 6. 6 6. King 10 King 6, ten, six, 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 six. six, six. With three spades? Yeah. Cool. Wow, Donnie. A royal flush. Okay, maybe we just call it the royal flush room. I don't know. <laughs> Not to be that guy, but you need to collect the time extensions. That is true. Hubbard owes three of them. They are collected. You see Wiseman there. Left with 20,000 in chips. So imagine betting against the player with a royal flush. That is just the most brutal spot to find yourself in. Of course, Weissman with a very strong hand himself. Now it's time for the Weissman comeback. That's about a small blind left, basically. And there it is. It's into the middle from the cutoff. He's got seven, five, five, three, double suited. Mockery's gonna raise it up or no sorry limps in for the full big blind my fault misread the chip amounts there Hubbard comes along from the small blind and Medarov checks in the big blind so if Wiseman wants to survive this would be a good time to do it because he can win a lot of chips he can go from 20k to 140k that said he's got to fight with three opponents on this one Ace-Queen-5 rainbow flop here. Since Medarov has one unknown card, we cannot display the odds yet. However, Weissman just flops a set of fives. Boys and girls, perhaps this is why you leave yourself with just a little bit behind. Although, at this point, it doesn't matter because Mockery just turned a wheel and Hubbard picks up a flush draw. A four-way PLO hand. My eyes are darting all over the screen to find <laughs> out who's got what, who's got which chances. Hubbard betting with ace deuce. Six nine, three diamonds. Medarov doesn't strike me as a player who likes to fold. I mean, I, I don't care what that fourth card is. He just <laughs> he does give it up though. Now it's on Mockery who has that wheel. Also going to be hard for Wiseman to fill up here because a lot of those cards have been used already. False. Medarov folded an ace. Wiseman himself has a three. The case five is dead. All right, raised from Mockery. That oh, knocks out Hubbard. Still, still some outs here for Wiseman. There's anyone I can beat. 
So that pot there is the side <laughs> pot that's going yeah. to Mockery uh, before really is not that bad, Wiseman huh? is at risk yeah. up against Mockery for the main pot. Not He's at risk and he can win 140k. So he, he would go from 20 to 140. But he's going to need to fill up here. Looking for ace, queen, or a three. Dylan Wiseman on the brink of elimination. Probably the best possible spot he could have asked for. A lot of extra money in the middle here. The only problem is that Mockery already has a wheel. River card is the seven of spades, and that will not Good do game. it for Dylan Wiseman. Uh, enjoy, the, enjoy the gift, Stephen. Put it in the kids' college fund. <sighs> Lots of diaper money. <laughs> Dylan Wiseman, with some parting words there. Yeah, talking about <laughs> Hubbard. Talking about the fact that he gave away his chips against the Royal Flush. Meanwhile, Mockery gets to claim the scalp in the... Is it okay to say, like, Merry Christmas or something? It's only October. <laughs> it's too early for Merry Christmas. Um, Happy Halloween. Something. Oh. I don't know. Have you been to the stores? I mean, <laughs> I went to... I think, I think Christmas started a month ago. I went to Costco, and it's, like, <laughs> it's December 15th. We were just talking yesterday about how many royals we all had, like, at the table. <laughs> really? Yeah. Nice. Like one or two days ago. Yeah. We were all like, I, I've made this many, I've made this many. And we're like, you know, talking about different games. And nice. But it's a good way to do it at a final table, yeah. So I guess yeah, it wasn't Hubbard's there. first. The way he just casually mentions that conversation. I mean, you had it Let us know in the I chat. Mean, you Have you never in made hand. a royal flush yeah. in a live what? poker game? What? I don't know. I have not. I really can't wait to see his hand. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what? Thank you. How many hands are this level? How many more hands? Two more hands? This is the second of three, I think. Second of three? If you're enjoying the content, by the way, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Let's bring this thing to 100 likes. PGD PLO series streaming eight of the 10 events of this series. As Mockery raising it up to 120k. Medaroff finding double suited queens in the small blind. Oh, you guys all, sorry. I'm I've almost forgotten that Richard Dreyko is at this table, Donnie. He's just been <laughs> sitting back. We haven't even shown him on camera a lot, you know, because he just hasn't been involved that much. I mean, he played that hand earlier when he flopped the full house against Wiseman, but other than that, he's sure. kind of just, uh, you know, been an innocent bystander here and making his way to the top four. But, hey, if you can not do much and just continue to ladder up, I mean, you can't really complain, right? Laddering up is part of the game, indeed. Players clearly still getting used to the RFID table. Lots of missing cards. You've got to put the cards in the individual scanner boxes the same way. Medaroff is showing to all of us right now. Bryko probably has one card that didn't really hit the sensor, meaning that we can't see what his full hand is. At this point, though, it doesn't look like he has much. How much is in the middle? 420. 420 in the middle. Medaroff with a pair of queens, but also, more importantly, 7-4 connecting fairly well with this board. <gasps> Go and Medaroff takes this one down, chipping up to nearly two million chips. Zambricki says in the chat, I made a straight flush to a king, but no royal. Man, that's like so close. Philosopher in the chat says, Greco definitely the strongest player at the table. I don't doubt it. You know, Runner one's coach, Kilo specialist. Teddy, one of our moderators, says he's made one in video poker. Well, I hope the payout was good for that one. EC Gap says 2-5 game, rivered it, and won a 1K high hand bonus. That's the way to do it.
random spot here between <coughs> both players in the blinds. <coughs> Ace, eight, six, two hearts on the flop. Okay. Both players with straight options. Mockery, of course, heavily favored <coughs> by the higher end of the straight. Nice wrap there, but without the hearts. Not the ideal situation, but Blackpool right, quickly lets it go, and Mockery takes this one down. 80 80. Yes. Sounds as though the blinds are going up here. chance to let you all know so we got some sick new merch in the shop but also keep in mind that pc.com has all the information you are looking for as a poker fan over 100 plus high stakes tournaments a year season long the leaderboard and 1.3 million in bonus prize money the pc championship takes place in january and we're going to stream it all live it's going to be a blast the top 40 in the standings qualify for that event players in this PGPLO series, desperately trying to I'm gather enough like points. Donnie, can you have five. a look for me? Just a hair under, I think. See whether there's any sort of PLO-specific players making their way into the top four. Uh, it's of the Richards. How do you say your last name? Rico, Rico. Either or. All right. How do you say it? Oh, well, you Rico. have two. You give two sayings to your last name. <laughs> Greco, Greco as he uh, is undecided on the pronunciation of his name. So I will say this. There was a player in the top 40 who has now been bumped out. That was Lataro Guerra, who was the first PGT PLO Series champion. Kaquan Lau is probably the closest. To, I mean, Dylan Wiseman as well, but he also, he, I mean, he played the mixed game series. He had some success there. He's played Hold'em as well. So it, it's hard. it's hard to say that any player is specific to... Pot in Omaha. I mean, the one that probably sticks out the most is <laughs> he is for sure like 99% a PLO player, and that's Jan Peter Jachman. Right. Although he made the WSB main event final table, so he got the majority of his points there, but he's out here battling at the PGT PLO series. He played the Super High Roller Bowl PLO. You know, he's very much a Pot in Omaha player. He travels around the EPT all over, the, you know, all throughout the, you know, the last couple decades or so, just mainly playing high stakes PLO cash on the side. Might take a shot here and there in a high roller, maybe an EPT main event, that sort of stuff. But very much a high-stakes PLO player. It just so happens that he broke through this year on the PGT because he made the WSP main event final table. But he's, he's the most predominant uh, PLO player. That's the highest on the leaderboard. Jack-10 for two spades. A set of jacks and spades for Hubbard here. Rifle with ace-king, 10-8. Shot to the straight to go along with his pair of tens. Looks like 250 from him here. 250. Hubbard with the heavy squint. Not sure what it means, but I haven't seen that before. Lots of love for Richard Greco in the chat as Hubbard goes for the check race to 650 with his set and flush draw.
Greco lets it go, and Hubbard takes this one down. He would have loved to see a shove there into his monster of a hand. Hubbard becoming a bigger and bigger favorite with each passing hand as he rakes another pot in. Now up to 5.5 million, 68 big blinds. Mockery still hovering around his starting stack from today's final table. here for Greco. Raise one of Comes in for a raise. of this final table down to the final four. If you're just tuning in right now, thanks for making it out for the BGT PLO series. This is a 10K final table. Tomorrow, the final table of the 15K progressive bounty, which is turning out to be an epic one. Some people predicting that this is going to get around 120 entries off of just 50 total players, meaning that the players are firing in lots of bullets. We've never done a PKO before, so it's going to be interesting to see who the largest bounty, what the largest bounty payout will be at tomorrow's final table. Funny little wrinkle to that format is that during heads up play, the payouts are identical because you're playing for the other player's Pop. bounty as Hubbard reaches for a pot size re raise over the top of Mockery's raise to 160. I'm guessing we'll see these four players once they finish up their play here today, hop on over in that tournament. Certainly with some little extra cash from making the final four here today, they you know, they have enough money to hop on over there to get into that event. These final four guaranteed just under Mockery's in there. Two chip leaders going to war. 1.4 million now in the middle. Hubbard's got the ace, king, king, five. He's in position. Mockery's got 10, nine, seven, five. Jack, 10, five. Two pair now for Mockery, tens and fives. Also has a straight draw. Hubbard's also got a straight draw. He's chasing Broadway. He's got that over pair of kings. He also hit a five on the flop. Backdoor diamonds for Hubbard as well. I mean, this hand is a good example that you can flop decent in PLO. You know, you can flop bottom two pair. Equities still run extremely close in this game and on most occasions. Mockery is first to act here. Looks like he's reaching for chips. Looks like 700k or thereabouts. We'll get the official count here from the dealer. 725. 725. All 
right, Hubbard makes the call, and this pot is swelling quite large here. Medaroff and Greiko are, must just be loving it. <laughs> the two chip leaders just going to war here. Almost three million in the middle. And still almost a dead flip here as we go to the turn. Six of spades, hits on the turn, no spades for either player. Odds now swinging a bit more into Mockley's favor, but... Yeah, not by much. No. I mean, you know, he was 52% on the flop. He only goes up to 62% here, but... We'll see if he wants to continue to drive the action. He, he could shove here. He's got less than pot left. He's got 2.67 million behind. Pop. Wow. Does no, do it. Almost. Probably. F27. Twenty-five, twenty-six, seventy-five. Twenty-six, seventy-five. So our count. Pretty much spot on here. Mockery all in. Hubbard with a decision to make here. Donnie, this seems like an impossible situation for Hubbard just with one pair. I mean, this is a huge hand. I mean, if you're Hubbard, if, if you lose this, you go from chip lead to, you know, right back into the thick of things, and that's not really where you want to be. You want to be out in front, you want to be in control. And for Mockery, I mean, he can go from second in chips and a comfortable second to out. Oh, wow. Wow, the call is made with just one pair. Hubbard and Mockery, the two biggest stacks clashing. 8.1 million in the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, Hubbard has 15 outs to send Mockery to the rail. Otherwise, he'll be left with just 1.4 million chips. Hubbard needs help, though. He called with just a pair of kings. Mockery, tens and fives. River card is the king of spades. And Hubbard hits GG. a set. GG. 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 Mockery shaking his head. Disgusted, Donnie, at this hand. I, mean, I, I can't sit here and pretend to be thinking what Mockery so is thinking, but if I'm in his shoes, today. I woke I'm thinking, up. How did you call that? Well, well that might see, be a fun thing to do. <laughs> well, to be honest, I didn't tell all of you guys my secret weapon yet. I'm not sure if I want to spoil the guts yet, but I'll tell you now that we're three-handed. I just had a baby, so a new daddy run good. Congratulations! Wow. Yeah, you guys. Wow! Are Round of applause in the chat there. New for daddy run good is real. The new dad, Stephen Hubbard. We're gonna that college fund here at the final table of this 10K PLO. What a massive gamble that was. Just a pair of kings hits a set on the river. And all of a sudden, he takes an enormous chip lead. Donnie, this is not even fair anymore. It is 74% of all the chips in play, three-handed. I can't believe he made that call. I cannot believe it either. That is something that we need Dylan. Also with two spades out there. I mean, can you get Dylan Weissman on the phone? <laughs> this one's for you, Calvin. Calvin, You'll understand there it is. this in about 18 years. <laughs> I hope YouTube is still around in 18 years for Calvin to watch his dad pay for college. Either of you have kids? Yeah, me too. 11 month. What? 11 month old. Wow. Okay. Yeah, See, I trump like... you because my son's only four months old, three and a half. Well, hold on. That hardly seems fair because they get more expensive as they get older. Yeah, I'm just saying the Wait till younger you need pony money. How then older? come to me and tell me you need to win a tournament. How many kids do you have? <laughs> uh, one. She's seven. Seven. See, we all have young kids, but I trump with the youngest kid, so the new daddy run good. Donnie, you know you've just won a massive pot when you've taken an entire hand and you're still stacking <laughs> chips. This is like that guy in your local cash game who just like loves to gamble and he never stacks his chips because they're always in the middle. I still can't believe he golfed. <laughs> and then hit, hit the river. I mean, that was amazing. Almost exactly the same. Yeah. Almost. 
hang out, might have like 50k more or something. Yeah, at this point, wow. <laughs> it doesn't matter for me. I mean, I... I mean, and if you're better off in Greco, you just, I mean, you just got gifted. Yeah. Like $25,000. Amazing. Yeah, the, we didn't even mention the pay jumps. Yeah, everyone guaranteed now $123,600. Mockery took $97,850 home Six. for his fourth place finish. Seven. How much chips are in the tournament? Uh, it's at the bottom. Yes. You have like nine. Okay. He is still stacking on. He were two and a half hands in to the stacking process. Give this man Oy. some white chips. Sandy Sanchez says, the guy can show his hand and he has to call. I, I just flat out disagree. I mean, I'm going to preface this by saying that I'm certainly no PLO expert, but that seems like ICM chaos there. Wow. Absolute insane hand. Um, that's a pretty good hand. I like mine too. I mean, mine's not like amazing, but I'm not sure if I'm folding. I mean, I almost feel like if let anything, look, let me look at it again. Yeah. We'll see if it got any better. Just pot it on the flop and, and try and I'm push mockery off, off a hand suited, that he, you know, me, hand like he has. It. Let me see if it's double suited. Is mockery gonna it's really not. just take bottom two pair and a gut shot for um, his tournament value, his tournament okay. life there? But hey, listen, this gentleman has bigger cojones than we do. And he now has 73% of the chips in play. So incredible, absolutely incredible. Uh, Metaroff, by the way, Donnie, he was the short stack, has been laddering and, and raking in some chips right. yep. comfortably now in the top three. Coming to their rightful place. He is That's still stacking chips. <laughs> we are four <laughs> hands later. <laughs> yeah, we, need a, we need a color up here. I know we're, we tend to lean that, you know, the more physical chips on the table, the better, but I mean, it's just, what is he, it's got 25, 30 stacks over there. <laughs> the chips, of course, the blues are 5K, the purples are 25K. I can't wait for Richard Greco's um, <laughs> run of once video about <laughs> on this On that hand? hand? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be incredible. This is now Stephen Hubbard's tournament to lose. Sorry, can I get a wallet? Yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna even bother. Oh. Slowly but surely. Let us know in the chat if you would have made that call with Pocket Kings to gamble for a potential 75% of the chips in play type chip lead, or whether you would have taken the conservative route. Either way, that was an amazing hand to watch. Double suited, right king 10 7 3, raises the button. Line here. Queen Jack 6 2 diamonds. Medarov on the flush draw here. Hubbard hits a pair of queens. Medarov 
up as 225. Hubbard's in there, four clubs on the turn. Okay. That gives him a flush draw and a, and a wrap to the straight. This is, this is a fun hand, Donnie. There's a lot of options here, <laughs> a lot of ways in which this can swing. Seventy pot bet announced for Medarov. Donnie, if Hubbard's play on the prior hand versus our former Czech Republic based chip leader, this seems to be the no brainer for him. Yeah, you would think if he stuck it in on that one with all those kings, all then he's, he's going to be here. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Oh. All in and a call. Medarov and Hubbard going at it. Medarov here with 13 outs. Hubbard ahead with a pair of queens. And these guys are not holding back. This is the true spirit of Pot Limit Omaha. This is going to be another test of that new daddy run good right here. We'll see if it holds true. Here's a river card. It is the nine of diamonds giving Medarov a flush. And Medarov now up to 3.9 million. Hubbard, of course, could afford to lose this pot. But Richard Greco will not be happy that he is now the underdog here in this three-handed battle. Medarov now four, nearly 4 million, 3.91 in his stack. Hubbard, of course, still a ball out in front. 1.67. Richard Greco bringing up the rear there. 1.67. Yeah. 1 million 670,000. Looks funny. We are three-handed here in event number three at the PGT PLO series. You're just saying? 1.2. Ten thousand dollar buy in. You said 1.6, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I was making, I heard 1.6. All right, so what is it actually? thousand dollars up top for the winner. Hit that like button. We appreciate everyone who is joining us here today on this right. fabulous Sunday. We're coming to you from our secondary studio inside the Poker Go studio. Recently renovated this room so we can bring you even more live poker action all year round. I will say, I, I, I'm, I'm partial, of course. I might be a little bit biased, of course, but... I think this new studio room looks incredible. The team did an excellent job renovating this space and building it into this lovely secondary studio. Thank you. It's got like 2.7 now, right? <sighs> no, it should be more than three. Richard Greco here on the button with ace, five of hearts, and a four three. He is the short stack right now. He's got 20 big blinds to work with, so. Hubbard limps in from the small blind, queen six four deuce. Raise from Medarov, and that gets it done.
are just tuning in. This is our PGT PLO series. We're streaming eight events of this 10 event series. Got an, a very exciting one for you tomorrow as well. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It just uh, spreads the word on these live streams and we hope to do more and more of these for you guys in the future. Hubbard raising it up here to 280, applying the pressure, taking it down. Off, double suited yet again. King 10, 9, 6. Given his playing style, I expect to see a raise here. Two. 200,000. Queen 6 8 here as Hubbard defends his big blind. Hubbard and Medarov both always eager to get involved. These players do not back down one bit from okay. each other. Action does go check check as the 8 of spades hits on the turn. Medarov with a lock on this hand. Strangely enough, no way for Hubbard to find a win here. Donnie, this is a funny one, actually. Ten seconds. Medarov has a lock on his hand with a pair of sixes. 250. Medarov has Hubbard's king covered, and the other remaining cards are lower than a six. Don't see this often, that's for sure. <laughs> also, I mean, it's probably going to be difficult for Medarov to, you know, recognize this, but we'll see. Hubbard does come with a bet, 250. Medarov gives it up and Hubbard takes this one down. Gets back up over 8 million. Greco, a happy observer of all the action between Medarov and Hubbard, wouldn't be surprised to see them playing a big pot again at some point in the near future. King, queen, 10 8 on the button. Greco's going to get involved here. Limped, Hubbard called, and Medarov checked, so we got three reaction here going to the flop. A little bit of something for everyone here. Check. Greco with the best of it with a pair of kings. Medarov hoping Check. for backdoor flush, or of course a wheel will be an option. Ten on the turn gives Greco two pair.
200,000. Raise Paul. Raise the 920. Here comes Greco. <coughs> Haven't seen him be too aggressive, so he's going to get a lot of respect there. Boy, that raise it helps him roll that. He had the best hand in this case, and Greco carefully picks his spots. Now up to 1.8 million. Queen Jack 10 6, double suited. All right, Bob. Is it too important to attack Greco's big blind? By the way, let us know in the chat who you're rooting for. Richard Greco, the runner one's coach, the, uh, the theoretic genius as referred to by the chat on YouTube. We have Stefan Hubbard, our, our, our fresh father with the daddy run good, willing to gamble in massive spots. And then there is Medorov from Bulgaria. Come. Who's been battling his way back from a short stack, doing very well here at this final table. Worth a try. Heads up. Better off making it 240. Greco with the call. <clears throat> Better off flops. Top and bottom, and then bottom to check. four. Greco here. Metarov does check. Metarov's also got the better backdoor hearts. Also could hit the nine to make a queen high straight. Size bet from Richard Greco, 560,000. Metaroff repots it, and wow, is this it? Here we go. Wow, this is it. A quick double check of the cards, and Richard Greco makes the call, drawing to just two outs. Donnie, disaster for the Brit. Yeah, not the hand he wants to see from Metaroff here. Just has him crushed all sorts of different ways. Wow, just I mean, you don't <laughs> see this often. You get it all in on the flop. You have 2% in pot limit Omaha. Holding him over a barrel here. Richard Greco needing a miracle to survive here. We are two cards away from being heads up. Queen of spades hits on the turn. Both players have a queen, so this doesn't change a thing. Greco still looking for that eight, and an eight only will save him here in this tournament. River card is the king of diamonds, and that's Good game, it. Good game. Richard Greco, good showing here at this final table, but ultimately could not find a way to heads up play. He collects $123,600. hand one more time? Just and there it is. I feel heads like up I'm now going crazy. Between oh. Stefan Hubbard okay. and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's like Medorov kind of from cool. Bulgaria. Yeah. 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 Once I checked, especially. Yeah. yeah. I was just uh, seeing things. Almost. Something else? No, no, no. Uh, his way. Obviously, I was wrong, but I just wanted to double check. To double his best career score if he wins this thing. You want to take a best break now or in seven minutes? Before. Almost $150,000. I just need to uh, take a quick restroom break. Huh? I just need to pee. We're finishing yeah. in sixth Let's place. Do whatever. Right. Nice. Stefan Hubbard. Also looking for 
biggest Short break. score of his career. Uh, yeah. If you want to break, we can do it right now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Looks like the players are going to go on a short break, but we are not by the magic of production and working with a dynamic delay to give you all. I should call this the no break room. The no break room, indeed, indeed. Looks like they are up to 90 entries in event wow. number four, that $15,000 PLO Progressive Bounty Tournament. You guys can follow coverage of that event on PGT.com. Live reporting handled by Tim Duckworth, Mickey Doft, Brandon Bloom. You can also check out the schedule of ah, events for the PGT, boy. the leaderboard, news and articles. And the Hubbard is coming out swinging here right away. Metaroff limps the button. Hubbard pots it. We don't know Metaroff's half hand, excuse me, just yet. Hubbard does have the ace, queen, nine, three. Metaroff makes the call. Okay. Is this, uh, this going to be over in one hand? I mean, <laughs> it, it very well could be. All right, the king, eight, seven, seven for Metaroff. Eight, six, deuce. Rainbow on the flop. Spades, of course, would have been wild both the ace and the king in play here. Metaroff's pair of eights check. good here. Hubbard happy to check. Two sixty. Around sixty thousand is the bet for better off. Hubbard quickly gives uh, it up. 260. 260. Yeah. Better off takes it down. First blood there to better off here in this heads up match. Closes the gap slightly. Donnie, this is a deep stack heads up battle. 64 big blinds for the short stack gives us a lot of room to play. But given the style of these players, you have to assume that it's going to be <laughs> constant fireworks. Yeah, you know, this will, if my memory does serve me correctly, the deepest heads-up match we've had so far at the PGT PLO series. That said, as you mentioned, I don't think these guys are going to hold back. They <laughs> haven't held back all final tables, so I would expect nothing to change here. I expect them to get their money in if they flop anything. They might even get it in pre-flop. Who knows? But I think these guys are going to certainly press the edges to the max. Pop. Playing heads up for, what, about 70K or so? I mean, that's a lot of diaper money. That uh, is a lot uh, of diaper money. By the way, Vasil Medarov has an 11-month-old. Cool. Stefan Hubbard has a 4-month-old. So it is the battle of the new young fathers. How old is your second one now? Um, two months, three months, something like that. So you deserve it even more, don't yeah, you? Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> Can someone I'm still still waiting for my new daddy run good? I've had two kids. I ain't winning shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone put Donnie in the PLO progressive knockout? There's still time to register. Ace five three one diamond here. Hubbard flopping top air has diamonds to go along with it for a potential backdoor draw. Christy asking if we've had a Chino sighting today because <laughs> he, a, as he did in event number one coming into the studio, he, he came into the studio yesterday as well. So it's <laughs> yesterday he came in to check on his buddy Alan Lee. We haven't seen him in here today. He, he's out there battling in the 15K PKO, that's for sure. I did see him earlier today. Yeah, speaking of the, the PKO that's going on right now in the other room, uh, PGD.com has live reporting, Donnie. Two of, the, two of the future live reporting Hall of Famers Tim Duckworth <laughs> and Mickey Doft are on on the call, I want to say, but they are definitely doing the reporting for that event. So go check that out. Check out the live reporting on PGD.com. Have it open alongside this live streaming action. Daniel Negreanu firing tons of bullets in that event. We could see absolutely enormous bounties at tomorrow's final table, which Donnie and I will be covering. So if, uh, if heads up PLO between these two doesn't fancy you, then uh, you definitely want to give it another world tomorrow yeah, because there's lots of bad. star power we can right now it. in one or next the one main room. Yeah, 
Nice one here on the button for Metaroff. King, Jack, 10, 8, oh. double suited. He announces the pot, 240,000. Ace, King, 10, 4, for Hubbard. He's gonna get in there. Hubbard's got four diamonds in his hand. Queen, Jack, nine, two diamonds. This could be some fireworks here. I mean, I'm already disappointed we're not going to see a royal flush on this one. Well, I know, he's, he's, but he's blocking he's, his own outs. He's blocking his own royal flush. 200,000. Check from Hubbard. 200,000 is the bet from Metaroff. I feel like Stefan Hubbard reminds me of a blend between Jens Kielonen and Victor Blom. <laughs> Both players here do have a king high straight, 50. but that free roll belongs to Hubbard because he's got those diamonds. I guess unfortunately for him, he's got four diamonds, so he blocks some of his own free roll outs here. Check raise to 550 from Hubbard. I mean, Hubbard, of course, excuse, excuse me, Metaroff, of course, has to be aware of the fact that if he's up against a flush draw, his hand does not look all that strong. It is just a lot of equity against him. Same goes, of course, for sets. And with 1.6 million already in the middle here going to the turn, this hand could really explode if the blank pops off. And that's exactly what happens. A five of clubs, the blank of all blanks hits. Both players still with the nuts. Hubbard still on that massive free roll. A diamond could give him the win. And did I just hear Metaroff say pot? I can't. He's out of position. Oh, I heard, I heard someone say something. I thought it was Metaroff. 900. 900k is the bet from Hubbard instead. Action now on Metaroff. Donnie, do you want to like force the action here or do you want to control the pot because a board pair Almost or a flush card on the river could really sink your 1. tournament? 6, 6. You might be sizing it up here. We know that five of clubs is a safe card in terms of it not being a diamond, also not pairing the board, which, you know, you have to always be concerned about your opponent making full houses. A little okay. double check here for Metarov. Hubbard moves all, excuse me, Metaroff moves all in. Hubbard with the snap call. And indeed, a massive free roll for Stefan Hubbard. Vasil Metaroff looking to fade a diamond on the river here. What a disgusting spot here. All in with the nuts. 28% chance for Hubbard to end the tournament right here on the spot. Absolutely massive. 9.7 million in the middle. Most of the time, we'll see a chop in this hand. But it is not over yet. Hub the river has been kind to Hubbard before here at this final table. River is a diamond! Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Stefan Hubbard absolutely unstoppable at this final table. Vasil Medarov played a fantastic final table, and there it is. Two Ooh, fists kills. in the air for Stefan Hubbard. And he's feeling himself, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. He is absolutely feeling himself. The new daddy run yep. good pays off for Hubbard. He Lift that trophy. <laughs> Lift that trophy. Come on. Hold that hold that up high. Your son's gonna watch this a few years from now. Gonna have this on rerun. What a display. Yeah, new dad energy. New dad, new dad energy run good indeed. Drill. Let's go. For Calvin, Donnie. Taking it down. Oh Stefan Hubbard Holy winning shit. event three of the PGT PLO series for 231 thousand dollars and a heap of points in the race for the overall winner of this series which com which comes with a twenty five thousand dollar cash bonus what a fantastic final table this was quick and easy lots of great hands we saw a royal flush Woo! 
I can't ba wait to be back tomorrow with the final table of the 15k PLO Progressive Bounty. All the main stars are still in the game. Don't miss it. 2 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow right here again on YouTube, Twitch, and all the other channels where we were live today. We'll be back tomorrow. My name is Rem Karinkama. Donnie Peters alongside me. We'll see you tomorrow.